This is Bishop George Murray. On behalf of your Catholic friends and neighbors in the Diocese of Youngstown, I invite you to join us for this celebration of the Holy Mass. Good morning and welcome to our celebration of Holy Mass. Today is the fourth Sunday of Advent. Our celebrant this morning is Father Jack Lavelle, pastor of, of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish in Niles. I am Ron Puhala from Holy Family Parish. As we pray this Mass, let us remember in our prayers Constantino and Carolyn Serbo. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Our brothers and sisters, as we gather together today to celebrate this fourth and final Sunday of our Advent journey, we are afforded by God a few more days to truly make our hearts as well as our homes ready to become that welcome place for his son. Let us begin this mass and let us prepare ourselves for Christmas by calling to mind our faults and failings, seeking God's mercy and peace. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech you, O Lord, your grace into our hearts, that we, to whom the incarnation of Christ your Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord spoke to Ahaz, saying, Ask for a sign from the Lord your God. Let it be deep as the netherworld, or as high as the sky. But Ahaz answered, I will not ask. I will not tempt the Lord. Then Isaiah said, Listen, O house of David. Is it not enough for you to weary people? Must you also weary my God? Therefore the Lord himself will give you this sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall name him Emmanuel. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Lord, let the Lord enter. He is king of glory. Let the Lord enter. He is, he is king, king of, of glory. glory. The Lord's are the earth and its fullness, the world and those who dwell in it. For he founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Let the, Let the Lord, Lord enter. enter. He, is he is king, king of glory. glory. Who can ascend the mountain of the Lord, or who may stand in his holy place? One whose hands are sinless, whose heart is clean, who desires not what is vain. Let, Let the, the Lord, Lord enter. enter. He, is he is king, king of, of glory. glory. He shall receive a blessing from the Lord, a reward from God his Savior. Such is the race that seeks for him, that seeks the face of the God of Jacob. Let the, Let the Lord, Lord enter. enter. He, he is, is king, king of glory. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Paul, a slave of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God, which he promised previously through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures, the gospel about his son, descended from David, according to the flesh, but established as Son of God in power, according to the spirit of holiness, through, though through resurrection from the dead, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him we have received the grace of apostleship to bring about the obedience of faith 
for the sake of his name among all the Gentiles, among whom are you also who are called to belong to Jesus Christ, to all the beloved of God in Rome, called to be holy. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about when his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together. She was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we come to this fourth and final Sunday of Advent, and yet we are still afforded several days to make ready, to prepare, to really see if we have done everything the Lord has asked of us to make ourselves that worthy dwelling place for his son come Christmas. In one of those rare happenings this year, with Christmas falling on a Sunday, we are afforded all four full weeks of the Advent season. There is no other time than this when we are given so much of the Advent journey, each day step by step to make ourselves truly ready, to make ourselves that worthy dwelling place. The irony is that when our Advent season is as long as it can possibly be, our Christmas season is the shortest it can be. But really, we are not making ourselves ready just for Christmas Day or just for two weeks out of the year. What our Advent season needs to become for us is twofold. Yes, we know that we're making ourselves ready to celebrate Christmas 2016. We have probably all in one way or another been making ready whether it's shopping and wrapping, baking and cooking, cleaning and decorating, all of us has done at least some of that to this point to make our homes ready, to show our friends and our families, our neighbors and passerbys that we are ready for the coming of Christ in Christmas 2016. But the second purpose, and perhaps the far more greater purpose of Advent, is to make ourselves ready for that second Christmas, that final coming when the Lord will fulfill his promise and come back to us and gather us to himself, when we will live forever in that Christmas joy because the Lord has been born to us and has gathered us to himself for all eternity. We are not just making ready for two weeks. We're not just making ready for one day. We are truly preparing for an eternity. And what are the hallmarks then of that preparation? It's not just about how many cookies we can bake, how many gifts are under the tree, how many lights are on the tree, but it is have we truly made our hearts a worthy dwelling place? Have we rid ourselves of whatever we have done to not love God or others as we should? Have we offered forgiveness 
as much as we have sought forgiveness? Have we truly put ourselves on that journey of faith? That journey of faith that we hear so well about in the gospel today. Because for Joseph, this was perhaps the greatest journey of faith. To place his hope and trust and belief in God. Now, it's too easy these many years later to elevate Mary and Joseph to their rightful places in the church, but to strip them of their human concern, to strip them of their human knowledge, to strip them of all that they were part of. Mary, a 13 to 15-year-old girl, being told that although she had no relations with a man, she was chosen to become the mother of God's own son. And Joseph, a young man himself, being told that it was okay to take Mary into his home, that this was all God's plan, that it was the power of the Holy Spirit that conceived a child in her. At any point, Mary and Joseph could have said no to God. They could have said no to his plan. But each of them placed their faith and hope and trust in him. Today, Mary and Joseph's story in the gospel challenge us in our own journeys of faith. Even when things seem impossible, even when it can't possibly go that way, to place our trust and hope in God, to trust in his providential care, to trust in his journey that will lead us through this world into the kingdom of light and peace and happiness. That is truly the gift the Lord is seeking to give us at this coming season of Christmas. If our Advent journey hasn't been everything it should be to this point, the great gift of this longer Advent season is that we still have a few days left. We still have days to make ready, not just our homes, but our hearts not just to buy the perfect gift at the mall, but to give the perfect gift of forgiveness and reconciliation. May we truly make this a worthy season, and may we then come to bear witness to the birth of Christ, not just recalling that gift in this year, but recalling that great promise and hope for all eternity. May the Lord truly allow the light of his Son to shine in our hearts. And now, trusting in God's mercy and peace, let us turn to God and let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the The Father Father Almighty, Almighty, maker of of heaven and earth, of all things visible and and invisible. I believe believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will will come come again again in glory to judge judge the living and the the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now, trusting in God's divine providence, let us turn to our Father and offer our many prayers and petitions. That Christians might proclaim that God is with us in their actions of generosity, righteousness, and justice, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. That world leaders might acknowledge God's reign and in turn care for and protect even the least of their people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all who benefit from the commerce of the Christmas season, that they may recognize the source of their prosperity and work to end poverty, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For all those traveling during the coming holidays, 
for the grace of good companionship and a safe return home, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. For those who suffer depression at this time of year and for those who are burdened by the holiday season, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our prayer. God, our loving and merciful Father, we humbly present to you our many prayers and petitions, those we have voiced and the many more each of us holds in our hearts. We pray in these final days of the Advent season as we make ready for your Son's coming, that you will hear and answer our prayers according to your will. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord Lord accept the sacrifice in my hands for the the praise and glory of his name, name, for our our good and the good of all his holy Holy church. Church. May the Holy Spirit, O Lord, sanctify these gifts laid upon your altar, just as he filled with the power of the womb of your blessed Virgin Mary, the Son of God, through Christ (laughs) our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the baptizer sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in praise. And so with all the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, You brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing into his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Celebrating therefore the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis, our Pope, George, our Bishop, all the bishops, and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy, thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come, thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Now let us offer each other a sign of that peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. My roof but only say the word, and my, and my soul, soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Having received this pledge of eternal redemption, we pray, Almighty God, that as the feast day of our salvation draws ever nearer, so may we press forward all the more eagerly to the worthy celebration of the mystery of your Son's nativity, who lives and reigns forever and ever. 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you with the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. O come, O wisdom from on high, who orders all things mightily. To us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O come, our Lord of might, who to your tribes on Sinai's height in ancient times did give the law, in cloud and majesty and awe. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O branch of Jesse's stem, from every fro deliver them, that trust your mighty power to save, and give them victory o'er the grave. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O key of David, come, and open wide our heavenly home. Make safe the way that sets us free, and close the path to misery. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come to you, O Israel. O come, O day spring from on high, and cheer us by your drawing nigh. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadow put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice.